What is up guys? DJI has announced, announced? <laughs> DJI, forgive me. DJI has announced the DJI. <laughs> DJI has announced the Ronin 4D. Looks like it's from space. Let's go. So the first thing I want to say is that I am first and foremost a documentary filmmaker and I also do commercial work. So the only place I really see this camera before we dive into all the specs and the footage and all that kind of stuff, I see this camera for scripted content. I don't really see it as a documentary camera and we can talk more about that after I go through all the details of what this camera has to offer and what it's all about. Okay. So here are the specs, and these are all specs I've pulled from BNH and from DJI's site. So it's a full frame camera. You can get the 8K sensor or the 6K sensor. So you have to pick between the two. It shoots Apple ProRes RAW up to 30 frames per second, 4K up to 60 frames per second, and 2K I think at 120 frames per second, but I think it's cropped. There's BNC, an HDMI connection for video, headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter, interchangeable lens mount. We'll talk more about the different types of lenses you can use on this system in just a second. It's great in low light because it's got a dual native ISO. The dual native ISO is pretty impressive. The low base ISO is 800, the high base ISO is 12,800, which is pretty freaking insane. I think the only other camera that can match that is um, the Sony FX6. I can't remember what that dual native ISO system is, but um, this is very impressive. So you have built-in NDs. Thank you so much, DJI. Uh, I think everyone's gonna appreciate that, and that's something a lot of the creators that have been testing out this camera have been praising it for, that it has built-in NDs. It's really making it uh, camera for the camera operator. Four axis stabilization, so you get those traditional three axes, so the up, down, left to right, and then tilt, and then you get a fourth axis, which is the motion, controlling the motion of your steps, so you get completely smooth footage. It's got active track mode, so it makes it very easy to track your subjects. Integrated stereo mic, so it's got a built-in microphone, built-in 3.5 millimeter audio, and a two times XLR port via the expander plate with that comes with time code in and out as well, but you have to buy this separately. One other thing I think I should mention is that this thing uses LiDAR for its autofocus, which is really impressive, and we, um, I have some videos from DJI that show the, how the LiDAR works, how it reads the image, and how it uses that to get incredibly accurate autofocus as well as they have different autofocus modes you can use autofocus with your manual focus to get your manual focus even tighter so you're working together with audio focus to get amazing manual focus let's talk about the lens options dl mount 24 millimeter 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter these are the lenses that dji has for this system so far. I'm sure they're gonna come out with more. Or you can use the M mount with Leica lenses, or E mount with Sony, Tamron, Zeiss, Sigma, Voigtlander, or Siru, which I can never pronounce. Siri, Siru. Media, single slot for a Pro SSD one terabyte drive, as well as a single slot for CF Express Type B card. Batteries, TB50 intelligent batteries, same as the Ronin 2 and the Inspire 2, which is super cool that they're not just making a whole new battery for the system, that you can utilize some of the batteries that you already have if you already bought into GGI's um, Inspire or the Ronin system. Wireless transmission control, you can buy this extra wireless transmission control system with an extra screen and it sends all the control data to the wireless screen. There's very low latency, if any. More and more directors are asking me when I'm doing documentary shoots for an external monitor, especially a wireless monitor, because they want to see what's happening and what I'm filming. It's cool that DJI gets this, but I think, again, this camera is more for scripted content. I don't really see it as a documentary camera. I'm, I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit, but it is cool that they're making this camera versatile for small crews or large crews. So the cost of this camera is over $11,000. It's eleven. dollars thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars USD and that doesn't include the extra wireless monitor and it doesn't include that back 
base plate with two XLR inputs with time code in and out. So these are all extra things you're gonna have to buy. But I think it would be safe to say for about $15,000, you could have this whole camera package, this whole uh, cinema camera, gimbal camera, all smashed into one with your wireless monitor system and it would be incredible for commercial and scripted content. Let's talk a little bit about why I don't think this is a documentary camera. And the thing with documentary is there's such little time for setup and you have to be ready for anything at any moment. You don't have a lot of time to set up a gimbal and balance a gimbal. I do use gimbals for my documentary work, but it's usually when we're doing B-roll days and we're getting, and we have more time to set things up and, and get these long shots. Not to say sometimes we don't use it when we're doing run and gun, we do, but if you don't have an assistant, it's hard to carry around that gimbal and that camera all at the same time. And this is where that might come into play, but I just see too many things going on with it, with, with balancing and the lens options. With documentary, it's great to be able to have a zoom lens. And yet sometimes I, I do like to use prime lenses when I'm filming docs, but when I'm doing run and gun stuff, it's great to have a 24 to 70, a 24 to 105, on your camera and you're kind of shooting with that all day, especially if it's a day where there's a ton of, lots of different subjects, lots of different scenes and we're running around the city and we just don't have the time to switch lenses and do that type of thing. So for documentary, I just don't see myself using this because of the fact that I won't be able to put zoom lenses on this camera, it looks like, which is I think gonna hold me back in terms of that run and gun style documentary. And the other thing is this camera's really cool and I think it's great for scripted and commercial because for those types of things, you do want super smooth content. But I shouldn't even say that. Sometimes with scripted stuff, you want handheld stuff. You want it to be shaky. You want it to have that shaky feeling. So I don't think having a camera that's constantly stabilized, I guess you can turn the stabilization off to give it that little bit of shake, but I just don't know if having a gimbal permanently attached to the camera is a great option. Um, like I said, I'd have to use it. Um, I would love to give it a try. Uh, I might have to rent one in a couple months when they're available, <laughs> but um, for now, I really see this as a great scripted tool of the future. This is amazing. But you're gonna be getting this 8K or 6K, which is future proofing your camera. You're gonna be getting all the features that pro uh, DPs use on Hollywood sets and and big commercial shoots. So I really think they kind of hit it out of the park with this. Well done, DJI. Um, this is an amazing cinema camera and tool for the future of young filmmakers and old filmmakers alike. So yeah, guys, super exciting times.